With us on set is Pat Patterson, and we're going to be talking today about her project called The Mustard Seed. Welcome to the show. Oh, How are you? you? I'm excellent. Thank you. I got invited to a private party, uh, the showing of The Mustard Seed, mm -hmm. and I have to tell you, it is such a wonderful concept. You really put together a fantastic project. Well, thank you. How did the concept come about for you of The Mustard Seed? I think it was... I, um, it started four years ago, and okay. I had this story in my mind that was basically, having grown up as a Catholic kid, what would purgatory look like? You know, what, what, what happens in purgatory? And so my daughter is a short story writer, so I, I gave her the concept of what I wanted to do, and she took it, and she wrote a wonderful short story, but she didn't want to do the screenplay. Then I realized purgatory really defines just one religion, one faith, one, and that, that's not what I wanted to do. So then we expanded it to be what happens when you die? Where do you go? Who decides? What do you see? And with all, you know, those of us with faith have the Bible. But now we have these near-death experiences, which they estimate there are 23 million in the United States since they started counting, if you will, in 1975. So there's a lot of source material. So we... 23, how many? Million. 23 million it's, people have had a near-death In the United experience. States that have been recorded. Wow, yes. I'm yeah. missing out on something. I know. I'm well, not asking for it right now. <laughs> no, Light, <laughs> lightning coming down. Ah! You know, but it's that's, it's wow. amazing. So, so there are these stories. I mean, today program did a piece on it. You okay. know, and so I've been in contact with these people. I don't even need to use their stories. Mm -hmm. I'm just understanding their journey. So the mustard seed is about um, my character, because why produce if I'm not going to be in it? My character um, loses everything she loves, and, and God, who reveals himself as the man in the hat, thinks James Spader in the blacklist tries to reclaim her love and her faith, and, and eventually does through the use of an angel and a, a youth who is a healer but happens to have Down syndrome and only answers to Dr. Bacon Maddox. Cast with that, you know, group of characters, he delivers people to her home, which is called the mustard seed. Okay. And there they will be at the beginning of a near-death experience. It's a bit of touched by an angel meets quantum leap in that... Okay. Our takeaway is you are profoundly known and loved by God, but we're going to explore that moment in time, you know, during your life review, because people will say a lot of things. There's like 15 indices of the near-death experience, but three are, there is life after life, they all say. They're not afraid to die, and they all have that life review. And it's always, you know, in a nanosecond, obviously, because time is not the same, but we're going to focus on that place in your life where you made a decision, sort of the road not taken or taken, where you planted your mustard seed and can move mountains, or where you failed to see God's hand and have lived with this maybe bitterness and fear, and now you have a time for reconciliation. And at the end, you're either going to go to heaven, eternity, or you're going back to earth to finish your job. So that's the basic premise of what we're doing. The short that we're premiering at Soho this weekend, International Film Festival, is to introduce the characters. And Obviously, to see my my abilities as a producer to put it together. It's, it's a marketing piece. It's a marketing so piece. So it's a short film that's enjoyable all on its own, mm -hmm. right? Thank it's you. It's perfect yes. and complete yeah. as it is. Right. But you also have the intention of turning it into, is it a television show? Television series? show. Okay. Yeah. I've been pitching it. I, um, I have been down to Nashville, Orlando, and out to Hollywood. A wonderful woman... Um, Jacqueline Iloff is her name. I met her down in Orlando at the National Religious Broadcasters. She fell in love with the project. Then we went to Hollywood. She set up all these appointments with Sony and MGM and uh, Hallmark and Lionsgate. And they're interested. They love the concept. So now go off and create a pilot. So we're in the position right now that we're... I've hired screenwriters. They have gave them an impossible deadline, but they seem content to do it. Good. And um, we're going back out to Hollywood to, to try to attach the level of talent that will pay, make people sit up and pay attention. And that really you know, is the process. That's so it. you come up with a concept. Sometimes people just pitch based upon a, a right. concept, but really people want to see something. They need to mm -hmm. see and feel it. And that's why you decided to create a short film first. Right. And, you know, I, I am trying to uh, not replace my characters, you know, me as my character in the piece. So I want the people to also see my level of to acting ability, that I can deliver the goods, you know. And, and it's not the first time you've ever been in anything. You were oh, in a, no. an award-winning film uh, feature last year. Tell us about that process as well. Uh, it, it's so funny. My daughter-in-law's father watches everything, and I happened to see him at my grandson's third birthday yesterday, and he's like, I saw you in Wet Behind the Ears. I saw you in this. I, saw you. I said, wow, you do watch everything. But um, I was in a, a film that two young people filmed on Long Island made called Wet Behind the Ears. Made it for $15,000. They basically said, okay, I have a credit card. Well, 
it was just so delicious. And cast, the only two people they went to casting were for the parents. Mm -hmm. They didn't know anybody that age, you know, other than their <laughs> own parents who weren't actors. And it was a wonderful little coming of age piece of a girl. My daughter graduates high school, uh, college, and now she can't get a job. And they, you know, you're going to get a job uh, in the Hamptons at the ice cream store. Uh, and she creates her own business. So, but American Airlines immediately picked it up to show in their on their flights, mm -hmm. so they flew these kids to all the film festivals for free, and then eventually it got picked up for distribution, and it won Soho. It, it won basically every film festival audience award. Wow. Because it was just one of those really feel-good films. And that's, for me, like The Mustard Seed, I want you to feel good when you watch that show, just like you did with Touched by an Angel. You know, and the reason the Quantum Leap part is there, if you ever were to go back and watch those, because they're Scott Bakula from years of the late 80s, he believed that you had a second chance. That's where he was going when he leapt into someone's body. It was to help them have a second chance at um, making life critical better, point. a critical point in their life. And that's what we want to do with our projects. That's what I want to do with all my projects. Now, talking about a critical point, you told me that you were an <laughs> overweight kid. Oh, I was obese. I, okay. weighed, I, I, I weighed about 240 pounds, Okay. about 100 pounds more than I weigh sitting here today, growing up in South Jersey. Um, and. I didn't have a lot of friends. I was smart, you know, God gave me the gift of, of intelligence, but I, you know, I wasn't in anything, and I, I was never an actor, I was never in a school play, I was never a flower, so I would go to my parents' rec room, if that phrase even exists, to watch old Hollywood movies and sing and dance, and I would pretend I could sing and dance and act, and triple threat, I'm a single threat, but that's okay. <laughs> and it planted in me as this, you know, 14, 15-year-old, quite unattractive young woman, this desire to tell stories that I, I could create out of the written words. Somebody sits there in blood, sweat, and tears, puts words down. Now, my job is to make it have flesh and bones, to make you want to know them, to make you want to sit with them and talk with them like we're talking, you know. And um, it wasn't until I was 24 and had lost not all the weight, but some of the weight that I had the nerve to tell anyone. And I moved to New York City in 77 to follow that dream. So, yeah. Congratulations, <laughs> yeah, because a, it's been a journey for you. Yeah. It's a journey. Yeah, and I think that the challenges that you overcome when you said, here I am, I'm, I'm lonely, I'm, you know, mm -hmm. you would maybe not have been able to watch all of those old films right. and lose yourself in those right. films and learn your craft by watching, right? Had you not had that experience. And just but knew. now you flipped and now you're in front of the camera, you're producing mm -hmm. things, you're experiencing you. yeah. things, you're, you've got a great cast in this short. I know you're trying to get them attached, you know, for the television mm -hmm. show. Uh, how can people reach out in, in support of this project? What could make a difference for you? Well, I mean, we're not doing any type of funding campaign, but I do have, you know, the, uh, the Mustard Seed website. But really, if, you know, in this day and age, you know it, Twitter. Okay. Um, my personal one is PPP Dreams, which we're pro promoting. And then there's um, Mustard Seed TV. Great. That's my two Twitter. And if you could go and follow us and let us just interact with you, because when you go to the studios, it's saying, so how many Twitter followers do you have? I do it as a producer. Right. Of course. It's it's free advertising, and it's part of how you you um, you promote a project now. Everything's nowadays. social. It's social media. Social media. Absolutely. It's so funny because a lot of times people will either they'll watch us on, on CBS, mm -hmm. you know, on the television mm -hmm. show, but a lot of times we're seen in 25 countries uh, digitally o over the sure. Internet. Yeah. Awesome. You know, and we're on the first page of Google, you know, people could right. Google live it up, and I'm right there. And it's so funny over the years not realizing how each one of those likes was going to be integral in the success of this brand. Correct. You know, and so they all matter to me. I, I'm like, I'm so thankful. Anytime somebody follows me, I'm like, oh, thank you. I try to like follow them back and <laughs> try to doing be engaging. That, yeah. <laughs> so, but we thank you so much oh, for joining thank us, you so Pat much, Patterson. Donna. And congratulations for all the challenges that you've overcome. Um, we wish you all the best. It's going to be amazing. And, and you're short. I, I liked, like, liked it. I really did like thank it. Thank you. So. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Stay tuned for more on Live It Up. We've been visiting with Pat Patterson. She's an actress. She's a producer. She does so many things. If you have a vision that you'd like to see into reality, follow your dreams. Just do it. All right. Thanks for watching.